Hello green stylers, Cynthia here. Today we are going to be making the Hannah swim top. I'll be stitching up both versions, the straight straps and the halter for you. So right along with me from start to finish or if there's a specific step you're looking for, simply scroll to find that step or use the handy hyperlinks in the video description to skip straight there. Here are the pieces you'll need to cut. You'll see the straight straps on the main screen and the halter in the inset. The first piece to cut is labeled B1, the front bodice. Choose between the crop length and the full length. You'll see my black and white version is the full length and the halter version is the crop length. The second piece to cut is labeled B2, the back bodice. Make sure to follow the dotted lines for the straight straps and the solid lines for the halter version. When choosing shelf bra fabric, keep in mind that something with a looser stretch will provide a loose and less supportive fit, whereas a tighter stretch fabric will provide more support and a tighter fit. So be sure to choose your fabric according to your personal needs and preferences. For the side ruching, you can either use ties or elastic. Cut four pieces of either the fabric or elastic according to this chart, which can also be found on page nine of the tutorial. For the halter version, you'll need a halter tie, which will be 40 inches by one and a quarter inches of fabric. You don't want to tie the halter behind your neck. You can use the pattern piece for the optional halter loop seen here. We'll start with the straight strap version. Use the hyperlinks in the description to skip ahead to the halter version or scroll to about the halfway point at around 21 minutes. We'll begin by pinning the front and the back pieces, B1 and B2, with right sides facing each other at the shoulder seams. We'll also do the same for the shelf bra pieces, L1 and L2. Use a serger or a stretch stitch on your sewing machine to stitch these four short seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And here's how it will look opened up after you stitch those seams. Now we're going to finish off that neck opening. Begin by laying your main pieces opened up with right sides facing up on your table and then lay your shelf bra on top with right side facing down so the two pieces are right sides together. You also want to make sure that the front of the shelf bra is laying on top of the front of the main piece and the back of the shelf bra is laying on top of the back main piece. Pin all along that neck opening, making sure to align the shoulder seams. We're again going to stitch with a stretch stitch or serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now let's add some elastic to that neck opening for support. I'm using this quarter inch cotton swim elastic, but you can also use clear. I'm using a stretch stitch um, zigzag on my machine, and I'm using zigzag number eight with a 2.5 width and a 3.0 length, so it's just slightly lengthened. You wanna make sure that the main fabric of your swimsuit is facing up and that's what you're attaching the elastic to. And you also wanna make sure that the elastic stays inside of that seam allowance. I'll be adding the elastic close to a one-to-one -one ratio, but I will be pulling some slight tension on it as I attach it. Here you can see that very slight ruffled look of the fabric where the elastic is just very gently pulling on it. It's nothing dramatic, just for support. 
We've now finished that neck opening and the next step is going to be to finish these arm size. In order to do that, we'll start by laying everything open on the table and turning it right side out. Push the shelf bra through that neck opening to turn everything right side out and then get it all nice and straightened out. Once everything's laid out, we're gonna start working on finishing the arm side up at the top of the screen. Begin by rolling up the shirt starting from the bottom, the part closest to you, and you're gonna roll it away toward that other arm side. Once you get close, you're gonna grab this shelf bra from underneath and you're gonna pull it toward you. So now you have the shirt right side facing up on that arm side and you also have the shelf bra facing right side up on that same arm side. You're going to grab the shelf bra piece and bring it over the roll that you made so that now both arm side right sides are together and you're going to pin all along that arm side. Be sure to line up those shoulder seams and tuck away that roll. Push it out of the way if it's trying to poke up near those raw edges. You just want to make sure it's out of the way for when you're stitching. Now we're going to stitch along this arm side and I messed this up the first time I did it so I want to give you all the warnings and make sure you know how to do it correctly. Going to begin stitching three quarters of an inch away from the edge. See the red marks? Don't stitch there. Begin at the green dot and then end at the other green dot. And here's a close up. Don't begin at the edge of the fabric like I'm doing here. Start where the green dot is and stitch all the way down and then when you get to the three quarters of an inch dot at the bottom, make sure you stop there before you get to the end. And after you stitch up that arm side, it will look something like this, but with three quarters of an inch open on either end of that little smiley face there. So reach inside of that strap and pull the entire shirt through the strap. Take a moment to admire that beautifully finished strap, and then we'll do the same thing for the other arm side. Lay everything out on your table with the mane facing up towards you. You also want the closed finished arm side facing down towards you and the open arm side away from you. And you're going to begin rolling up and away from you again toward that open and unfinished arm side. And just like before, you're going to reach under to grab that shelf bra and bring it under to the front so that the right sides of the shelf bra and the main fabrics are both facing up. And then we're going to grab that shelf bra and bring it over and on top of the main arm side so that the arm sides are right sides facing each other and pin in place. stitch with a stretch stitch or serger just like you did on the other arm side remembering that three quarter inch at the beginning and end to leave unstitched. The next step is to hem the front and back of the bodice pieces. There's a one inch hem allowance included in the pattern. So turn up the pieces toward the inside one inch, pin them in place. We'll top stitch to finish these hems using a cover stitch, twin needle, or a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. To finish the side seams, we'll begin by laying everything face up on the table. I'll align the main bodice pieces on the left side of the screen with right sides together and side seams aligned. And then I'll pull both of the shelf bra pieces over toward the right side of the screen. So the one that's on the underneath, I'm pulling it out and over toward the right. 
The two shelf bra pieces will then lay with right sides together and aligned at the side seams as well. Now we begin pinning all along those long side seams. Be sure to carefully line up and pin the section where the main fabric meets with the shelf bra fabric. Remember that you have those openings at either end. Here's a close up of what it will look like when it's finished. Your stitch is going to go right across from the main to the shelf bra fabric and there's that opening there where you left the 3 quarters inch unstitched. You can use a stretch stitch such as a lightning bolt or a triple straight stitch for the entire length of the side seams, but I'll be using a straight stitch on the main bodice portion. As this whole section will be ruched at all times and there's no time where I'll ever be pulling vertically on my swim top and so I won't ever be pulling on that seam. The shelf bra on the other hand will need to be pulled down over my bust and will need a stretch stitch for that section. And be sure you're using that 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance. That's bigger seam allowance than we normally use. Use a straight stitch all the way up until we get to that shelf bra and make sure that when you cross over between the shelf bra and the main bodice that you are stitching on the fabric just inside of where you have that opening. Switch to a stretch stitch and continue stitching up the side seam of the shelf bra. Repeat for the other side seam and here's how they will look once they are stitched up. Remember there's that little opening right here but your stitch goes right across the fabric. Now we're going to use that big seam allowance that we just left in order to make the casing for our drawstrings. You can use an acrylic heat ruler like I am here or even your ironing board to create a nice stable surface to work on. I really like using this wash away adhesive tape in order to open up that side seam and hold it down. I found that it actually functions as a stabilizer as well when stitching this fabric down. But if you don't have any, you can use pins as well, which I will use for the other side of this casing. Notice that we are only pinning open the main bodice portion of the casing. We are not going to be doing anything with that seam allowance on the shelf bra. Back over at our sewing machine, we're going to use a straight stitch again. I'm going to lengthen it to 3.0 and stitch just 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of that casing. So we just want to leave as much room inside the casing as we can, but also securely stitch that edge open. If you want to use a lightning bolt stitch or a triple straight stitch, you can, but a straight stitch works great here. We are not going to be stretching the length of this shirt. It's going to be scrunched up together, so straight stitch works perfectly fine. Those stitches will not be pulled or popped at any time. how our casing looks from the outside. Make sure that you use a thread in your bobbin that will look nice on the outside of your fabric. And here's another look of the inside. And finally, the little openings that we've created for the drawstrings or elastic. Cut a piece of one inch under bust elastic according to the chart on page nine of the tutorial, but I always recommend Stretch it across your body, make sure it feels good in place before you commit. We're going to sew this elastic into a loop. I like to overlap two ends of it and use a very wide zigzag stitch back and forth a few times to secure that elastic, but you could also use a straight stitch and stitch in the shape of an X as mentioned in the tutorial. Once you've gotten that stitched into a loop, mark the quarter points and you also want to mark the quarter points at the bottom of the shelf bra. We're going to match up the elastic quarter points with the bottom of the shelf bra quarter points. 
and attach the elastic to the wrong side of the shelf bra. That's the outside of the shelf bra right now, the way I'm holding it inside out. Um, and it's the part of the shelf bra with the seam sticking out. Pinned at the quarter points, but now I'm also pinning in between each of the quarter points to divide it into eighths, so that will make for easier stitching. You can use your serger or a zigzag stitch like I am, and we'll be attaching that elastic close to the edge of the shelf bra. And now we'll fold the elastic once up toward the wrong side. So now the elastic is encased between two layers of shelf bra fabric and it'll be completely hidden. In addition, the elastic will be on the opposite side of the shelf bra from your skin. It'll be facing away towards the outside of your shirt, which is really nice because it keeps the edge of that elastic away from your skin, just in case you're sensitive. The part that's touching your skin will be nice and smooth. Stitch along the edge of that elastic with a zigzag stitch or cover stitch. You will be stitching right over the stitches that you made in the last step when you initially attach the elastic to the shelf bra. For this version, I'll be using the optional ties, but if you'd like to see the elastic option, skip ahead to the halter version where I use elastic for that one. To create the ties, we'll be making a simple tube. Fold the length of the tie with right sides together and stitch on your sewing machine using a stretch stitch or your serger using a quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the tube right side out and you will have a tie. And repeat this process for the other three tie pieces. And I just wanna give you one more look at that side seam from the outside and where the main attaches to the shelf bra. Here you can see the casing, everything is fully enclosed. All of those stitches are finished and there are no openings from the outside. The only openings are on the inside. And this is where we're gonna do our work to insert those ties. So turn your top wrong side out and here you can see where the openings are. These are those three quarter inches that we left unstitched. And this is why we did that because now we have little openings at the top of those casings. Take one of your ties and use a safety pin and you can just work it through that casing starting at the bottom. When you get it to the top, pin it in place so that it doesn't accidentally slip out while you thread the other tie through the other casing. And you can use a straight pin here, but I wanted to use the safety pin because I didn't want to take a chance of poking myself as I was working my next string through. When you get to the top, you're gonna to pull the drawstrings through enough so that they're out of the way and so that the pins are out of the way. We are going to be stitching straight across that casing from the right side. So we wanna make sure that everything, the shelf bra, the pins, and the ends of the drawstring are all out of the way of where we're going to be stitching. Mm -hmm. 
we'll be using a straight stitch and as you see the shelf bra is pulled away from the bodice and I'm just going to stitch straight across that casing back and forth a few times to really secure it and here's how it looks from the wrong side and here's how it's going to look from the right side. Just have a single stitch line going straight across and that's going to be right under your arm. At this point, you'll check to see if there's any excess length from those ties sticking out from the top of the casing. You'll want to trim that off just to make sure you don't have any unnecessary excess bulk right there under your arm. you can pull the ties through and get all of the ruching that you want, tie it at the bottom, and you are finished. Alright, to make the halter version, we'll begin by hemming the bottom of the front and back bodice. Turn the hem up one inch to the wrong side for both pieces. We're going to stitch those with a stretch stitch, twin needle, or cover stitch. Next, we'll do the side seams. Align the front and back bodice at the side seams and pin in place. And next, we'll be using a stretch stitch or you can use a straight stitch if you like for these side seams. The reason the seam allowance is so big is because it's going to be used to make the channels for our ruching. And the reason you can get away with a straight stitch here is because this side is going to be ruched up all the time. Um, it is unlikely that you're going to be pulling out the ties and stretching the shirt to its full length and beyond um, straining those stitches. So a straight stitch would work just fine. I went ahead and did a lightning bolt stitch just to show it being done. I did a straight stitch on my straight strap version and have really been enjoying that as well. Now we'll do the same exact step for the shelf bra. We'll line up the two pieces at the side seams with right sides facing each other, pin them in place, and then stitch again using a three quarter inch seam allowance all the way down those side seams. In contrast to the main bodice, you cannot get away with a straight stitch on this side seam because you probably will be stretching the length of that shelf bra when you pull it over your bust. So make sure to use a stretch stitch right here. Adding the back halter loop will allow you to bring those halter ties back down to the top of your back and tie it through the loop instead of tying it around your neck. To make this little loop, You'll simply fold the piece along the long edge with right sides together and stitch it on your sewing machine or serger using a quarter inch seam allowance. I did find that a lot of stress was put on this little back loop while I was wearing it. So I would recommend adding a strip of quarter inch elastic into the length of that seam before turning it right side out. Mark the center point of the back bodice and we'll attach the loop to the right side of the back bodice right at the center. Stitch the loop in place using a straight stitch and just being careful that as the loop 
pieces go underneath the foot that they stay close together and don't get separated. Now we're going to pin open these side seams in order to create casing for the elastic or ties. I really like using this wash away adhesive tape for this part. In addition to holding open the seams, it creates some stability when you stitch so that everything stays nice and flat. If you don't have some of this wash away adhesive tape, you can use pins instead, or you can even use pins in addition if you'd like that additional support. And just like on the initial side seam that we created, you can use a stretch stitch here to stitch down this casing, but I much prefer a straight stitch, so that's what I will be using. You're going to stitch just one eighth of an inch away from the edge of that casing. Make sure to back stitch a couple of times to really secure the bottom of those channels. I'll be using the optional elastic for the ruching on this top, but if you'd like to see the ties version, you can simply scroll back to the straight strap version that I did earlier in this video. Begin threading the elastic through one of the channels and you wanna pull it all the way through to the top just so that the end is barely sticking out the bottom. You just want a little bit so that you don't accidentally pull it too far through. Secure it in place using a straight pin Now repeat for the other elastic and the other channel. Now we'll stitch back and forth a couple of times in order to secure that elastic in place. I stitched right along the same spot where my hem stitching is, so there's going to be a little space between my stitches and the bottom of the top. this point you can pull the elastic from the top in order to create your ruching. Pull it as much as you want to create just the perfect amount of ruching that you desire. Once you're happy, pin it in place. I recommend using a safety pin at this point, then finishing the ruching on the other side so that you can make sure that both sides are even before you stitch them in place. Once you have the ruching on both sides squared away and you're happy with the way it looks, switch that safety pin to straight pins and we will stitch to secure the elastic at the top. Stitch close to the top, about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Use a straight stitch and go back and forth several times to make sure that the elastic is securely stitched. Trim off the excess elastic being careful to not snip into your fabric.
a piece of one inch under bust elastic according to the chart on page nine of the tutorial, but I always recommend stretch it across your body, make sure it feels good in place before you commit. We're going to sew this elastic into a loop. I like to overlap two ends of it and use a very wide zigzag stitch back and forth a few times to secure that elastic, but you could also use a straight stitch and stitch in the shape of an X as mentioned in the tutorial. Once you've gotten that stitched into a loop, mark the quarter points and you also want to mark the quarter points at the bottom of the shelf bra. We're going to match up the elastic quarter points with the bottom of the shelf bra quarter points and attach the elastic to the wrong side of the shelf bra. That's the outside of the shelf bra right now, the way I'm holding it inside out. Um, and it's the part of the shelf bra with the seam sticking out. You can use your serger or a zigzag stitch like I am. And we'll be attaching that elastic close to the edge of the shelf bra. And now we'll fold the elastic once up toward the wrong side. So now the elastic is encased between two layers of shelf bra fabric and it'll be completely hidden. In addition, the elastic will be on the opposite side of the shelf bra from your skin. It'll be facing away towards the outside of your shirt, which is really nice because it keeps the edge of that elastic away from your skin, just in case you're sensitive. The part that's touching your skin will be nice and smooth. Stitch along the edge of that elastic with a zigzag stitch or cover stitch. You will be stitching right over the stitches that you made in the last step when you initially attach the elastic to the shelf bra. Now we're back at the table with the shelf bra right side facing out. That's the side that's smooth where the elastic is attached and the main is right side facing in. So we are going to put the shelf bra inside of the main bodice pieces and now the right sides are touching each other. We're going to pin all along that top edge. We're going to stitch all across the places where I've pinned beginning and ending at those two corner points that I was pointing to at the bottom and leaving that front straight edge unstitched for the moment. You can use a stretch stitch on your serger or your sewing machine and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Here's how it will look after you stitch it. You can add a little bit of support to this top by stitching elastic onto that seam. You're going to be using a zigzag stitch. Start and end your elastic one half inch away from the edge as indicated by the black dots here. As always, you want to make sure and attach your elastic to the main fabric side of the seam. So my main fabric is facing up and I'm going to attach the elastic to the seam and just make sure that the elastic doesn't stick out or poke out into the shirt, that it's only on the seam or sticking out to the outside of the seam is okay, just not in toward the shirt. In addition, as you're attaching the elastic, you want to pull just enough to provide some tension. We are not pulling it very hard and gathering anything, but we just want to make sure that the elastic is pulled just slightly tighter than the fabric. And this will help provide a little bit of support without making it tight and uncomfortable.
here you can see my elastic is attached and there's like a slight ruffling of the fabric, but nothing very tight or gathering. An option that I did not do is to understitch the seam to the shelf bra. What you do is open everything up and separate the shelf bra and the main and make sure that seam is on top of the shelf bra. Um, and what you're gonna do is just stitch through the seam and the shelf bra to stitch those two together and that'll help keep the fabric of the shelf bra inside of the shirt. But what we're gonna do now is turn everything right sides out and we're gonna line up the raw edges of that front edge of the halter top. Take it over to the machine and using a basting stitch, which is a straight stitch at the longest stitch length, we're going to baste right across that top front, just lining up those raw edges and keeping them together so they don't wiggle around in the next step. Now fold that edge down one half inch to the wrong side, pin in place, and stitch with a stretch stitch. My lightning bolt stitch does not do a reverse stitch and I want to make sure and secure those ends carefully. So I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch and stitch just a few stitches with the straight stitch and back stitch and then I'll switch to a stretch stitch to go over the majority of that top edge. And I'll do the same thing at the end. And for a halter top, we need a halter tie. So let's finally stitch that up. Fold the halter tie piece with wrong sides together and along the very long edge. We're gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch or serger. And just like with that back loop, I would recommend adding a quarter inch of elastic to the seam for stability. Do not stretch the elastic at all. It will be a one-to-one -one ratio inside of that tie. Turn the tie right side out and then we will thread it through that casing across the front of the top. Play with the tie to make it super cute and sitting just where you like it on your body. And that is it. Congratulations on completing your very own Hannah swim top. Let me know what you think about this video and let us know how you like your Hannah swim top. We can't wait to see your makes. Please share them across social media using hashtag GSHannahSwim. Happy sewing and swimming from all of us at Greenstyle.